Hello everyone and welcome back. Got a fun one for you today. A few people have been asking for me about some tips on MB2. So here's one with some recurrent decay underneath that amalgam. You can see clinically it doesn't look too bad. A little bit of shadowing and haloist around there, but let's talk about how we're gonna take care of this one. So as with every case that's gonna get a crown, first thing we do is take it out of the occlusion with that nice big wheel bearer. Um, sometimes you'll actually find that the amalgam will pop out of there. It's, it's pretty nice if that happens for you. <laughs> uh, not every time though, but at this point, we'll go ahead and get that uh, carries out. and at this point the amalgam should pop out quite nicely so that's what we're doing here with that nice surgical length eight round carbide not something i usually use to access but it's a fantastic burr for removing carries as i've said in my previous videos i don't really like the slow speed that much and so i feel i actually have a better tactile sensation with the high speed but if you want like using it with a slow speed go for it i'm not i'm not judging you as far as where that goes so um here we have now have the access a little bit of dentin still inside there so i'm going to connect those two holes that have been exposed using my workhorse burr and we're going to get a fair amount of use out of this burr today so I'm already starting to do a little bit of troughing along where I believe the MB2 would be, kind of based off of what we normally see. Go ahead and take the 8C file down. The other three canals are very, very straightforward when it comes to this tooth. A little bit of hesitation there on the MB1, but nothing that we're not going to be able to get out. So already I'm trying to get into where I believe the MB2 would be. At this point, go ahead and open it up with the 2006, just like we know normally for that coronal flare. Like I said, the palatal and the distal buckle are super straightforward. Even MB1 is pretty straightforward here. It's the MB2 that gets a little bit funky. And I'm going to go through kind of my thought process and how we work through it. So I always try to hit it with the 2006 here. If I can get it into the MB2, that's fantastic. Let's let's call that a day. But the chances of when that happens, is it's pretty rare. I actually find it more commonly in retreats of all things. So that's a different story. But as you can see, I'm trying to get down the MB2, not really having much luck. I'm going to be using rinsing with, or I'm going to rinsing with uh, the Triton from Brassler during this whole time. I cut out a lot of the rinsing steps, but pretty much after every time I use a rotary file or um, sometimes even hand files, I'm going to be rinsing with either this or the water just to get the debris out of there. With calcifications, you don't want to be shoving more stuff down there. So that's kind of what it looks like. And I'm going to start troughing kind of in a comma shape from the MB1 along the distal or along towards the palatal. So you can see already we're starting to get that spot right there. That is where we want to look for. That's the debris that's inside the MB2 and that's where I'm going to be doing my troughing. For the more coronal troughing, I'm going to use that workhorse burr. It's a 0.14 at the tip, so not the skinniest thing in the world, but it's also not the widest. And I like using that in the first maybe one to two millimeters of troughing apically, mostly because it creates almost a flat surface. And when you have that flat surface, it's a lot easier to get your hand files or rotary files in there. Trying to poke around at the 8C, didn't get anything there. And so we're gonna go a little bit farther here with a work curse, like we talked about, um, just like you've seen me do in the past and start to move. Now you'll notice that the little white dot is moving. every time. I move down and we're taking we're shaving like maybe a tenth of a millimeter off each time and it's starting to move both measly and buckly and that's what you tend to see is that these mb2s where they start off is not where they're going to end up and you'll see that in this case here so very gently kind of going in there going back in with the 8c file trying to get something nothing in there um, i will also sometimes try the 1704 or the 2006 just tr switch it up and see what will grab it oftentimes the rotaries are going to be a better option for you here once again we've talked about this in the past K files, C files, any of the hand files condense debris apically and can ledge yourself out. Rotary files, on the other hand, when they're spinning, they are pulling debris up. There's the trick right there of using the paddle canal that's straight to heat up that file and make it a little more stiff. As you can see, it's buckling pretty quickly. I tried it with the MB2 or MB1 as well to try to get it to straighten out. Um, getting a little bit, but not really enough here. And the pressure I'm putting is very light here. Where th that buckling is from very, very little pressure. Um, you don't want to break a pencil tip. That's kind of the amount of pressure you want to do. So I'm going to try the 2006 here, see if we can't get anything in there. This was a newer assistant uh, that was assisting me, so she hadn't cleaned it off but uh, that's why there's some debris in there but I'm not really concerned about there being a lot of you know work on the file right here we're only going in like a millimeter or so and you can see not really getting too too much with the rotary files maybe a little stick here or there and that's what I'm feeling for as well so at this point I've now switched to the EG3 that's my sharp almost looks like an arrowhead burr and the thing to remember about this is it cuts most effectively laterally. And so what you're going to see here is I'm almost brushing with it, not really going too far apically here. I'm trying to just 
unearth any issue, any you know calcifications that may be on top of there. Going back in with a 6C file now, going a little bit smaller, seeing what we can grab. And you'll notice as I'm working, it's moving in that direction measly like we talked about. So as that file is going, you can see it wants to go measly. So what I'm gonna do now is take the EG3 and move that measly. You wanna use really skinny, skinny hand files, see which direction they go, and then use either a very skinny ultrasonic or a Munspur or EG3, whatever your preference is. Shout out to Ravi Coca in San Francisco, one of my great teachers from back at UOP, a great friend of mine. He's the one who actually taught me this technique many, many years ago, and I still use it to this day with quite a lot of effectiveness, actually. Other thing to do is kind of poke along in the middle. Sometimes there's going to be almost like a little isthmus forming in there, and where the MB2 starts is not where it ends up. So you can kind of use that 6C as a scouting instrument along the entirety of that calcification that you can see. And here's where I'm taking that 17 down. Still not getting too, too much, but I am starting to get almost a it feels like it's sticky, almost like you're, imagine you're sticking a rotary file into a piece of rubber. That's kind of the sensation you wanna feel. If you feel like you're sticking a rotary file into metal and it's not going anywhere, that's what you wanna avoid. That's when you have to trough more. You can see already, I'm starting to drop down really, really nicely. And what happens? Well, the MB2 has joined with the MB1. <laughs> Looking at the cone beam again on retrospect, yeah, it probably joined in the first place, but I cannot tell you how many times I've retreated cases like this where the MB2 MB2 joined and they didn't clean it out and it still failed. You go in, clean it out, it's a total Vertucci type, Vertucci, oh, that's a hard word to say, type two, and still it joins up and causes issues. So it is important to go after these things. Um, I'm gonna show the rest of the case here, just sped up a little bit, because you guys have seen this before. If you wanna see any, uh, you know, like I said, I did this because people were asking about MB2. If people are interested in more of the rotary techniques, the how I do the final rinse, why we use the activator, how we do squirt technique, let me know. I'll make more concentrated videos, but um, looking at the data, it seems like everybody has seen this about a hundred times, so <laughs> no one really watches this anymore. So I have it in here just in case you have any questions about it, but that's what it looks like. And what I'm gonna show with the arrow is where that MB2 start is. So you'll see that right here as it comes in, that's where the MB2 started, and it kind of just joins right up with the MB1. And you see this happen in a lot of these cases. So we're gonna use the squirt fill technique like we have in the past. Once again, if you have any questions about that, go back with the 20K file to patency and just squirt fill like we would normally using the BNL products. I'm a big fan of those, as you very well know if you're a friend of the channel. <laughs> After it all looks good, hit it with the pack mic, make sure we look all solid. And here is what it looks like. So you can see those MBs, they pretty much joined. And when we look at the final image here, there's really not any definition between the MB1 and MB2. However, we were able to keep things really nice and conservative, even though troughing sometimes can remove a ton of tooth structure and actually weaken the tooth. However, in this one, I feel that we were able to keep things so nice and small and tiny. Shouldn't be an issue whatsoever. Once again, the re whole reason I made this video is because of comments and personal messages I've received. Please let me know if you have any further questions, uh, comments, anything else you'd like to see. I make this channel for all of you. Um, drop a like if you like the video. Please subscribe. The more we get, the more I know what type of videos you want to make. Once again, I'm doing this for all of you out there, and I appreciate you all so very much. Thank you again, and I will talk to you next time.